So we wanted to start with just going over um, some of the, the basics of uh, Service Bridge, what are the different components. Uh, we're really focusing primarily on really from an implementation uh, viewpoint uh, with Service Bridge, but to start, you know, just to go over, you know, what is Service Bridge? So uh, Service Bridge is uh, it's a, a product uh, within the, the TMT service management, so TPSM, TSM, uh, MESM, uh, for connecting ServiceNow to ServiceNow instances. And you know, the really, we created this to be an easier way to integrate from ServiceNow to ServiceNow, kind of leveraging our position um, that you know, we see the number 85% of Fortune 500. I think it's uh, close to 80% when you get to Fortune 2000. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are using ServiceNow. Uh, and so with it, you know, the, the main goals, you know, that we have uh, with it is really just to grow revenues, you know, customers, partners, giving a faster onboarding, be able to connect easily. You know, one of the things, integration technologies have been out there for uh, forever, uh, but historically it's only done in a, a small percentage of, you know, providers and customers because of the, the complexities. Um, also improve the the satisfaction uh, of the, really the customer experience, and then this talks to integrations as a whole. You know, it really is almost an extension of the omni-channel message uh, that we have, where it allows the person to work where they want to work. And in this uh, case, it's customers working within their instance. So let's allow them, let's enable them to continue to be able to uh, uh, go ahead and continue working in their instance. And then lastly, it's really just driving down the cost to serve by getting structured data and using some of the features that we'll see, you know, now that you, instead of going through email or voice or other methods that now you can get this uh, structured information. And with that, you can use the rest of the capabilities of the platform, you know, drive automation, um, being able to do self-service, a lot of capabilities that we have uh, are dependent upon the data that comes in and, and using service bridge, having an integration allows you to have uh, high quality and structured data. So high level, you know, how it works is each of the uh, instances have an app. Service Bridge is a, a store app uh, for a consumer. It is a free app. There is no cost for them. And so they install the Service Bridge app from the store. There is a registration process that will be going through in the lab today to uh, allow for the provider to, to send a, a registration link to the customer. Uh, once they go ahead and the customer accepts that and finishes the connection, then you have all the configuration information. It's really made to be done uh, from the provider. So from a consumer perspective, that it's uh, a minimal uh, amount of effort that is necessary uh, for them to be able to start you know, using the content that the provider publishes over to them. Uh, so Service Bridge takes care of sending over all that configuration information, all the details. Uh, you can make updates from the provider. Uh, quite easily. So, you know, if you're connected to 100 customers, you update that uh, information and then publish it out to all the customers and something that takes, you know, a matter of minutes for them to now get that content and be able to start using it uh, versus previously, you know, a lot of shipping update sets, you know, development on both sides that takes uh, quite a long time. And is uh, just a big reason why, you know, you would see integrations were done with a handful, maybe they're uh, top customers of a provider versus all their customers because of that uh, complexity and overhead. And really the, you know, the vision that we're driving towards with this is making uh, service bridge, just a, uh, almost an assumed uh, integration path um, from providers to customers that it just becomes the de facto standard for integrating with service now to service now. So, you know, today we see a lot of these uh, different hyperscalers, access service, service providers, they have custom integrations. They have, you know, some of them have store apps, um, but it's, it's really, it's a hodgepodge. It's a mixture of all these different components uh, that are out there. And if you think about it from a, a customer's perspective, they have, you know, 10, 50, hundreds of different uh, partners, providers that they are working with. And if you think they have to do, you know, an, an integration, which, you know, maybe it, it seemingly sounds a, a little simple. You just have to use these APIs or develop some things. They have a lot of work that they need to do, but then they need to multiply that times a hundred different partners or uh, vendors that they're working with in order to do that and trying to make it now built into the, the platform, not a third party, not something that they need development on their side, that they can very quickly and easily uh, consume that and really 
expand the range of uh, partners, uh, providers, vendors that they'll be able to connect to uh, using a, a standardized way to connect. So the um, features that we have in, in ServiceBridge, we want to go over those and quickly, and then we'll go into a little more detail. So the first one uh, that we have, which goes into like a, a highly scalable way is uh, called the remote catalog. And so this is where we're uh, pushing, you know, from the uh, provider into the, uh, the customer consumer instance, these remote record producers, remote catalog items that will show up in a customer's uh, portal that their end users can now start ordering. And this is a uh, highly scalable um, because the variables get sent out. It acts like a record producer in the customer side, sends the data over to the provider. And then in the provider instance is where the, the process and the workflows run. Uh, so this is something that a, a customer could start using literally within minutes after they get connected because it's uh, all the process is now running within the provider instance. So this is something we always uh, kind of highlight as a great place for someone to start because it's uh, very scalable. You could create content, you know, as a provider, you know, if you're uh, selling laptops, just as an example, and you have an RMA uh, request, you could publish it out to a customer and that could be used by one or a thousand different customers with that same content and very easy, very scalable, uh, very high volume. Next is going into uh, uh, proactive provider tasks. So pro a provider task is a specific service bridge record. Uh, and so it's something that's going to be usable across multiple different customers. And think of this as sending now, uh, instead of sending blast emails, now you can send a task directly into a customer's instance. So now it's going into their instance. They have a task that they can assign that's going into the normal queue, going to the normal workflow. Um, you know, we're talking with uh, the ServiceNow data center team uh, about this. Uh, and they have their data center providers that they're talking with that they want to, to use this because today they get you know hundreds, maybe more of emails every single day. One of them might be that a, a package has arrived, uh, but another one might be that there's you know power issues uh, in one of the racks. And so it's a, a manual effort for them to go through those emails and then they have to go ahead and uh, create a record within our ServiceNow instance, within a data center instance. Uh, instead, they want to get a task that comes directly in because then they can workflow it, they can manage it, uh, they can assign it like a regular task within a normal workflow. And then the last one is what we call a remote task. And so this is uh, probably most akin to what you would think of as traditional e-bonding where you're integrating uh, process and, and tasks workflows from both sides. So say incident to incident or case to incident uh, between different instances. It's uh, something that will work with any task type. It's, it's task agnostic. So it doesn't have to be um, something that a, uh, has to be a specific task type. So with that, uh, essentially anyone that is uh, using ServiceNow can be a consumer of this because it can map out to any task type. So kind of recapping that, uh, these are the really the, the three top level features, I would say. There's a bunch more uh, function underneath it uh, that we have supporting each one of these, but provider tasks, remote catalog, uh, we highlight that as that, those because they really don't require any configuration uh, on the consumer side. You know, provider task is that specific service bridge record, so it's not going to be customized within a customer's environment. Uh, provider can send, you know, uh, proactive provider tasks over to the customer. A remote catalog, same thing. It, you, it sends over into the catalog, creates this remote record producer. You know, the consumer can go ahead and start using that immediately. Um, and then lastly is remote task. And that's, as I said, more like uh, traditional e-bonding. You're doing task to desk integration that requires more effort to set up because now you need to look at the process on both sides it requires some business analysis to understand, you know, is our, our state's the same, you know, if our state is open and yours is in progress. We need to map that out. Maybe there's some particular fields that are necessary when uh, marking a task as resolved. So we need to make sure that those fields are, are mandatory and sent over. So a lot of times it gets into uh, beyond the, the technical portion, 
of making sure that the processes are looked at, that they work on both sides. We had a uh, one customer that was uh, having some delays in uh, deploying remote tasks. And the reason was, is because on the consumer side, they had something that blocked emojis and was preventing, you know, a task from saving. And so it really got into looking at what was the process that they had in their side versus was the data getting over there. It was more so they weren't able to move things along because of this, uh, this thing blocking emojis on there. So that uh, remote task, I would say, takes a little bit longer because it does require looking at the existing process because now we are connecting process to process. Thank you.